Thank you. Maybe Daniel's on too. Excellent. Hi, Daniel. So I have started recording, by the way. Welcome, everyone, to our Chaos, Diversity, and Inclusion Working Group meeting on November 18, 2019. Um, let's see, in terms of notes, I had DNI badging update. And was it speaker demographics? Attendee demographics is the one we were working on. Okay. Maybe I can. Hi, Sean. Hey. Okay. All right, I'll post this in the chat just one more time. Um, okay, so on the DNI badging, I'll just start with that one if that's all right. Yes. Okay. So the DNI badging, um, Matt Snell got a, a grant on campus, one of the FUSE grants, to build out this as a prototype. And so that's a nice way for us to start, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so that'll pay Matt, and the hope is to have kind of a working prototype of this badging system prior to chaos con and it's not meant to be like an institutionalized prototype it's meant to be one to talk about because i had also submitted a talk at chaos con around this around this thing yeah so the hope is that those two things can go together that's it yeah congratulations matt now on being approved on the funding. Mm -hmm. Have you started any work yet or when when do you think you'll bring this to the community? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to build a simple software prototype like Matt said by ChaosCon, um, but I haven't started any work on the actual software part of it yet. So when you say software, what kind of software is this going to be um kind of like a it's not all software but there's a there's a software component to it that you build the badge with um and that's kind of automatically filled by the um by the parameters that people fill in for their um the diversity for their project so i don't have much of an idea of it yet but i know that i'm going to be following standards for um the badge itself, so I'm going to have, uh, it's hard to explain, but. I just put a link in to, I don't know if we've talked about this, Georg, but the Journal of Open Source Software is a model. Well, I, I'm familiar with the journal. Yep, so the model would be, remember how the, the model in the journal works, that we have a piece of open source software and we want to get a DOI on it. Yeah. And then there are certain criteria. I mean, you went through this process. Didn't, did we do this with the, oh no, you weren't on that one. But no. basically what it comes down to is there's a certain set of criteria that you need to have on your software in order to be published in the Journal of Open Source Software. And so broadly the, the premise behind the journal is to give people credit for the software that they produce, right? Um, but this, is um, and so then when you when you do the process on the journal of open source software you have to do things like prove that you have a readme and that it's a well-constructed readme you have to prove that you have test suites and mm -hmm. that they're, they're test suites that actually work mm, you have to prove that you have 
install files, things like that. You know, it's a certain set of criteria that have to be essentially proven. Um, and if you can prove peer all that. Peer reviewed, peer reviewed really. Yep, and so if you can do that, then you get published in the Journal of Open Source Software. Okay. And all of this occurs on GitHub out in the open. So for any piece of open source software that you might see published in JAWS, you can actually see a full, fully transparent audit trail of how that conversation went down. And so okay. the proposal is the same with the DNI badging, that if a project or an event wants to receive a DNI badge, they have to prove <laughs> or, or have peer reviewed um, that they've that they're doing these things. So for example, that they are recording speaker demographics and they are recording attendee demographics and they have an event code of conduct and that they are family friendly. And so all of that audit trail would occur on GitHub. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. We'll figure out the details as we go. I just... Yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges on this is going to be probably not the workflow of it, because I, I agree, there, there's probably details that need to be sorted out in the workflow, but it's actually being able to try, try to find people who would be willing to serve as editors. Yeah. Because there's a very human component to this. Okay, excellent. Thank you for the update. Sure. Shall we dive into attendee demographics? Yes. And I think we were almost done last time. Okay. I wasn't here last time, last Monday. Yes. Oh, what, what did I post there? That was not the... You posted a GitHub link. Yeah, I wanted to grab the... Their pull request are you... I don't... Okay, okay. I updated the link in the okay. um, minutes. So looking at the attendee demographics link or the next thing. Sorry, Sean, what did you say? So attendee demographics or minutes, which one are we? Are there no attendee de demographics? Attendees right. demographics. Yep. That's the one we wanted to look at now. Okay. Hi, Sala. Hello, how's it going? Hey, Good. thanks for joining us today. Oh, thanks, sorry, I'm a bit late. I'll no manage. <laughs> yeah, I tried to sneak in, you know, like, <laughs> off for a minute or two. And <laughs> yeah, actually, they should have like private mode on these things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyways, we could set it up to stream live on YouTube. That way, we don't know who is watching the live stream. We can do that. I know um, Zoom has the capability. I don't know how to. Yeah, we that. have it in no no this setup like that. Um, so we live stream the meetings by default. Like we, we obviously take a minute or two uh, to coordinate and then we say we're going to go live and then it's yeah. a live stream, right? I'll take a look at doing that. Yeah, yeah, but uh, we're going to have to, you know, come up with a really good announcement introduction in the beginning, you know, like have, have a thematic entrance for every episode and, you know. Jeez, that's, that's yeah. a lot of, that sounds it. <laughs> It sounds like a ton of work. <laughs> yeah, but well, at least don't start like, hey, because, <laughs> you know, here. yeah, we're here. Uh, is there anybody out there? You know, like, Maybe we can start with the community calls. All right, that's a good idea. <laughs> All, yeah. right. All right, cool. Well, last time we went through the entire document, uh -huh. and we feel it's pretty, pretty complete. Okay. So... Um, we have 
two notes at the bottom that probably go somewhere else. These? Yep. Okay. But other than that, um, unless there's anything else, we can create a pull request. Yeah, I'm just mostly looking at the structure, but. I think you got it. So Matt, I, I see you added a comment during last the last meeting in the survey part. Yes, uh, um, the one about use the survey to gather attendee demographics. Yeah, uh, I was just wondering. Um, did the sur it was just a small comment about the survey seemed like an ambiguous term. Um, yeah, that, that actually fixes it. So. <laughs> Okay. Resolve. And then what about the one right above that with the Likert scale question? Uh, sorry, but just back to the uh instead of the. Um, sorry, just before we move. Um, a survey to gather ethnicity demographics, is that described, um, like, is there a bar on what counts as a survey to gather ethnicity demographics? Because um, like I, I, I was in, I was studying in the U.S. and I had, like, I struggled a little bit to fill the census when I had to, um, you know, because um, like I first had to identify, okay, what do they mean by each of these, you know, groups for race, um, and then I was like, okay, but which one would I put myself under? So, so there's always this idea that, um, yeah, we we collect the demographics, you know, but really it's very very hard to uh, relate. Um, in, in some cases. So, so uh, is that like described, the process described somewhere? That's part of what I think Matt Snell's project is going to help us actually put on the ground. I don't think we have the process. There's some process described in our metrics, but I don't think that's fully described, is it? Yeah, so, so we're, we're, it's like- I'm asking oh, others. I don't, I'm not the best expert. Yes. Am I right, your Daniel? Um, yeah, I think we, uh, you know, like we're, there's, um, Georg is just updating the doc. Yeah, I was looking at it. Yeah, he's adding a link to the Open Demographic <laughs> Survey by uh, Dr. Nikki, Nikki Stevens. Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, you know, Georg also recommended we use that approach for um, uh, the Node.js survey. We're finally having a, the first DNI question on the annual survey. Uh -huh. And um, we, we elected to use the one, the relevant one from the Open Demographic Survey as a baseline, right? So. Which so is super exciting. The question that um, unless you change it, that we decided on was the one about disability to see if people in the community are having any disabilities to get a baseline, how many are affected and whether it impacts their work in the community at all. So. Yeah, I, I still have not figured out how it's being circulated, but uh, like I'm sure somebody said the answer somewhere. But I always keep wondering, you know, would it actually be accessible when it's when it's circulated, or because uh, that would, you know, skew the data, right? So, anyways, uh, so let's get back to this. Does this capture it for you, Sala? I mean, because there's a point where, okay, yeah, like any any point of reference, it's like okay. you're obviously doing it wrong. You could do it better, but not not any less than, uh, or else it's wrong, you know? Yeah. Okay. Because in, in the chaos project, we're always trying to find like how, what's the appropriate amount of information we can provide that helps people without over prescribing so how they do that work. So it's kind of trying to find that sweet spot. And if this seems to hit it for you. Oh, definitely. Because it kind okay. of sets a, a, you know, an expectation uh, to try to meet. Um, yep. you know, obviously people are up to, you know, they can choose whatever they want. Sure. But as long as you know two people in a room, one of them at least is honest, would say no, we're doing it wrong. 
um, mm -hmm. then then you're good, right? So um, okay, right on. Cool. What are you doing? Um, it looks like Matt is suggesting here to add more questions, if I understand it correctly. So I wanted to give it a try. Okay. I'm not sure if all those questions would be appropriate, you know, separately, but like that there's some way to unify them. Like I think Solo had a really good one at the bottom of that comment thread from zero to five hours your experience, but just related to diversity and inclusion. Would you just say are these sample questions, Aaron? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like what I, okay. Okay, so how was your diversity and inclusion experience at this event? Um, quick question here. Um, yeah. I have not been, in, in, been involved in this uh, discussion for a while. So we have the question, how diverse are the attendees at the very top of this? So I don't know if the specific questions we have here that you are now uh, typing here can map. If those, if those fit really well with that specific question. Because if we go only for how diverse, sure. then it's like we are not focusing on the on inclusion. I see your... What do you think? How diverse and inclusive are the attendees? Is that a better question? Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't want to update anything so i was just trying to understand because maybe i missed something so. no that's fair yes yeah that's why we do these reviews so thank, thank you. you so matt then i can resolve your comment uh, of course yeah okay so um, if we're uh, rating uh we can use the emoji scale uh, i find that this is universal um i'm not sure if it's screen readable <laughs> I, get I get it though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so screen readers might actually say, you know, um, this needs um, annotations or something. So, um, okay, I think that's a good suggestion that we should capture somewhere about general survey design recommendations because then that is true for all Likert scale items that we have, mm -hmm. many of them. Or survey best practices somewhere. Mm -hmm. Or just updating everything <laughs> by saying we can use a Likert or emoji scale. Yeah, I think emoji scale is like, you know, your your like how do you feel about right? So, yeah, yeah, my emotions are, you know. Yeah, and I, again, from chaos, we don't particularly care what scale is used. Just these are some options. As long as it's like at least, you know, more than one value, right? Yeah, and and appropriate. Sometimes maybe an emoji scale is not an appropriate scale. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a thing about whether or not you want to give them a middle ground. Uh, certain questions you do, certain questions you don't. Like all that stuff I remember from like a decade or so ago. Yeah, that's why we did the one to X. If you look at the Likert scale stuff, we had one to five before, and somebody <laughs> brought this point up earlier. Oh, so why don't you just say one to X? Yeah, I mean, in certain questions, you actually should always give a middle ground. Mm -hmm. So you should say, you know, this question needs to be an odd number or an even number of uh, mm -hmm. um, there's a criteria for the validity of the statistical data you get. Yep. That people can or cannot choose the middle ground because people often choose the middle ground that they can't choose anything else, not because they, you know, fall in the middle. Yep. Yep, but it looks like there's not one standard emoji scale. So I just posted, I just Googled it and I came up with different emojis for the different one, two, three, four, five, whatever. 
now I want to Google and see if NIST has developed standard emojis. I don't think there's, there's, there's somebody at NIST who's thought of it. The standard yeah. emoji scale. Yeah. But I tried to pick one that doesn't like, like that, that shows an expression, but mm -hmm. it does not have any, any like, Associated potential, you know, inferences like you know, because um, because now with emojis, you know, you could definitely find uh, all these faces that have other associated attributes. So, hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So like the teardrop or the drop of sweat, like whatever it is, <laughs> you know, kind of changes the meaning of a smile a bit, right? So. <laughs> Yeah. So I like the idea of giving people the option that uh, Likert scale can be implemented with numbers or emojis. I don't think it's something we should include in each metric. Yeah. No, no. It, it belongs somewhere else uh, where when I, you know, figure out where I should be doing all that mess, I'll put it there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I'm going to take a note of that. Um, I could just open an issue in one of the repos and say, those are things we need to figure out where they go and just drop them there and remove them from the docs so we can just. Yeah, I think actually putting it in the metrics repo would be a good place. Is an issue, right? I'll, it's um, just slash chaos slash metrics. Oh, OK. So if you guys have a project board, it could just be a card that's in an inbox in one of the project boards. We do not have a project board. Okay, so just an issue. Yep. Okay, perfect. I'll do that right now. And I'm opening a pull request to get this metric. Okay. Um, into our repo. So it's just the two final uh, notes, or, or, or do you want me to do uh, one issue with the three notes? One issue with the three notes is fine, particularly in that repository. All right. Um, okay. So uh, I copied them already, so you can delete them whenever you want. Okay. Um, Eric, once you get that, are you doing the pull request right now? Yes. And what is it called when we um, put in the pull request that it's approved lazy consensus? That's what I was looking for. You should know that faster. I should, <laughs> but that's not how my brain works. <laughs> Okay, uh, pull request 238 is created. Can you drop it in the notes? I will put it there right now. I see it anyway. Thank you. Um, could we, I mean, while we're on, could we just move over to speaker demographics? We certainly can. I'll post the Google Doc in the minutes. All right, and I updated the spreadsheet too. Thank you. So the Google Doc says it's obsolete, but now that we are reviving it, we can change the text. Oh, hey, look at that. Okay. Can we just get rid of that? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, 
So since we don't have resources, I should probably remove it. Well, we've just been keeping it in there as empty, haven't we? Mm. Look at that. Oops. Yeah, we did with the attendees demographics. That's true. All right. Um, I think it's just the first issue in the metrics repo, or unless it's the wrong repo. <laughs> uh, sorry, it's the first. Yeah, it's the first issue that is open in chaos metrics. Okay, the one you just posted. Yes. So Good. just thought I'd share that in case you know I was in somebody else's metrics, right? So no, no, no. we we keep that fairly clean. It's yeah. not the first issue ever. I hope. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, there are closed issues. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's the, the first issue ever, then yes, you're in the wrong repository. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Because we've had issues. You're not the first. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I have some as well. So. <laughs> All right. Well, good to know. Uh, yeah, feel free to add more to do's or find a home for each of these. I know, will. Ones. Yep. Yeah. Right on. All right, what am I doing here? Um, same, okay, so data collection strategies probably. Um, tools, right, visualizations, filters, I'm guessing this will probably get struck. Um. Yeah, we call it the data collection strategy. Yeah, I think usually, typically when I've been doing these, this ends up just kind of collapsing into that. You know what I mean? And then we double check these four bullet points above it if they duplicate what we have done below with more specificity. Yep. So this is the interview. I think we can remove this. Uh, which resource are we um, referring to as we're, like, what, what's your app? Are we working right there? Oh, okay, so just to me. Oh, so we're still at our oh, speaker demographics. Yeah, so we're just kind of. We've gone already, sorry. <laughs> I was still there. <laughs> yeah, attendee demographics is in a pull request now. All right. And again, the hope is, is that Part of working on these metrics is that if we put push forward a DNI badging program, that we have a set of metrics by which people could receive a badge. So that was kind of why, it, from an event perspective, which is kind of why these rose to the top. Yeah. There so maybe to filter our to attendees demographics. How well does the speaker line up for the event represent an diverse set of demographics? Speakers with diverse backgrounds who represent a variety of demographics to help an event provide different viewpoints from a broader and broader perspectives. Events with diverse speakers allow people from a variety of different backgrounds to feel more included in event when they see some characteristics. A little funny, but so um, uh, just one thing about uh, Markdown from Google Docs. Um, Google Docs can export text files, and they actually treat bullet points as if they are Markdown lists, not Markdown, but at least you know like bullet lists in yep. a format. Um, the one thing I found uh, was not convenient though is that they leave. Um, 
footers or footnotes, they have a style to document when you have a comment and an, an annotation in the doc. They put a letter in a square bracket, and then in the end of the doc, they add all these comments as square bracket letter, and then the actual comment. So that just adds noise. Um, yeah, so, so I, you know, you can leave lists in there and use the export as text, and this way, you know, it saves a lot of um, effort. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, my approach here was to um, just have it already in Markdown. So by the time we copy yeah. it, there's no conversion needed. Yeah, like, it's just a, you know, and like we do, we do that in Node, but, you know, I, I discovered that if we just do export text, then, um, you know, people don't wor have to worry whether or not people remember to bullet point every list item. Yeah. Uh, every everything else you, you you have to do in Markdown manually, right? Like add the uh, ATX or AXT headings and, and bold italics, links, and so forth. Um, yep. And you're right. I do use an add-on for exporting Google Docs to Markdown. Yeah. Does it have GitHub Flavor GFM um, as an option, or does it do? just use you know, some you know, awesome markdown and does all these um, special tricks, you know, like, like, cause GitHub's flavor is very, very um, opinionated. So and I've not run into any issues when I exported it to GitHub markdown. All right. That's so good. I, cause you're I right, sometimes it's correct sometimes weird stuff happens. Sorry? Sometimes weird stuff happens with GitHub Markdown. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like um like a uh, an opinionated war, right? Like everybody wants um to say that this can be Markdown, and Markdown is very clear, um and nobody actually does Markdown the way it was initially proposed. Everybody likes to you know give their own secret sauce to it. A. Filters. What is this filter? Who added that? I added that. What it's is from that? the attendee demographics um, one. And okay. so I just dropped it in to see if it fits here. OK. I've got a question about um, actually where Georg is right now, the interview question about the Likert scale. Um, that has some crossover with the um, attendee demographics that we were looking at earlier. Um, just wanted to point that out too. So you're thinking about changing it like this? Yeah, just to make them kind of the same thing if you're if they're going to collect the same data. Uh, oh, I see. It's almost basically the same question. So we can just copy paste the entire question. That works. Yeah. So uh, there is some weird, like, you must have a very sophisticated microphone because you can almost hear your movement in stereo. Who is this? So that uh, when, he, when he moves, when he talks. Yeah, I've been hearing that too. Yeah, so, no. On my headphones, it's like, like listening to one of those albums that puts it in a different ear. Yeah, no, like, uh, it's a Mac, so I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't put it beyond them that they capture, you know, all directions of sound, you know. Uh, Excellent. Like nobody else but Apple will spy on you, we promise. <laughs> I...
How'd you get rid of that one bullet point here? Oh, because it's duplicating what we have at the bottom. Okay. I can undo it. Review conference website together data. Review. No, I just was wondering where it went because I thought it was a good point. But if you, I, I hadn't been looking below, <laughs> that's all. Yep. I can move it down so it's not gone and then we can decide which one to keep. Okay. Okay, I think those are better. These top two. So I think maybe to Daniel's point on the attendee demographics. And if I look at some of these interview, interview speakers and attendees to understand more about why speakers did or did not meet their diversity and inclusion expectations, I think that's different than the question, which is how well does the speaker line up for an event represent a diverse set of demographics? So the question that I've highlighted, that's the one we are talking about, right? Um, no, this one, bottom of the first page. It's the same question, actually. So we can remove the one that I have because even, not either way, the question doesn't really answer speaker demographics. The question at the top is about speaker demographics, full stop. That's all. Okay, but asking how to improve diversity and inclusion, I know it's not 100% that specific question, but it's related. Okay. Yeah. I just wanna, I, it was not to get rid of it. I was just drawing attention to it, that's all. Yeah. So the way I see chaos and these metrics is that we provide one question at the top, but sometimes people have other questions. And so to be able to still use chaos for building out their own metric strategy, we need to provide ideas about the metric that go beyond just that one question. Okay. That's my personal view of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So could we kind of like what we did with attendee demographics, modify the top question just a little bit? Of course. So how well does the speaker line up for the event represent a diverse set of characteristics and? Can be improved in the future? Yeah. And so then interview attendees and speakers to understand more about why speakers did or did not meet. That's, yep. Um, how can we improve diversity and inclusion of speakers at this event? How did you feel represented by the speakers? Do you feel you were, did you feel represented by the speaker? That's fine. Survey speakers and attendees. I actually think we can get rid of that. Like survey speakers and attendees to learn to what extent the event met their DNI expectations. How will the speaker lineup meet your diversity and inclusion expectations? In light of your diversity and inclusion experience, how likely are you to recommend this event to other speakers? I think, again, I think we can get rid of that. Okay. We have to get rid of other. Done. Okay, yeah. 
So maybe we should say interview a sample and sample. I was like saying like sample questions. Include. All right, and then what about these last three bullets? This is like how to do it. I think these two uh -huh. are duplicating each other. From above? Well, this one says conference website. This one says secret website. Oh, oh duplicate. So this one was the one I moved down. We could remove this. OK. So could we just take all of those and just put them together? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I also added the filter. I saw that. By keynote sessions and tracks. Yeah, I think that's kind of important because that had come up a few times mm -hmm. in the conversation, such that in an event that like it's not just the keynotes that have good representation or one particular workshop. Yep. As one particular that has good representation where where <laughs> the ninety percent of the rest of the conference does not. I think that's the point there, isn't it? Yes. Okay. And I'm proposing to do the same for the attendee demographics. Okay. Oh right, that it's not just the DNI session that has good representation. Look at all of our amazing diverse attendees who are all in one session. <laughs> Mm hmm I think that's important. Are you just adding it to the pull request? Yes, and the document. Okay. All right. Um, well, I suggest that we leave speaker demographics where it is right now. We can close it out next week, maybe. Yep. I agree. Okay, attendee demographics pull request is updated with this second filter. Okay. Okay. Great. How do we feel about the speaker demographics? Should we just create a pull request for it? Well, I just put a note. Let's just do the pull request of the first of next meeting, like in case anybody else is on the call next week and they want to take a look at it. Or we could just do it now, I guess. I, I guess I don't particularly care. And we can talk about it on the PR. And we do have a that public comment period anyway. Exactly. OK, I'll create a pull request for it. OK, I will get rid of my note, my, my note in the notes. <laughs> Um, okay, so then I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna move that to ready. Aren't you, can you just make the PR now? I am creating it right now. Because then I'll just mark it in the spreadsheet. Create it, but it's not offering me a to create a pull request. Hmm, interesting. Technical problem. Yeah, GitHub just didn't uh, offer the create pull request button. I had to go a roundabout way to create it, so I'm creating it right now. Okay. 
while you're doing that, I'm going to kind of take a look at this. I'm going to post this list for folks. So in the chat, I put the spreadsheet. It's the tracking spreadsheet that we're using for metrics. So if you click on the tab at the bottom for DNI, we don't obviously, we're approaching the top of the hour. So you can see the green are the ones that were released in the first version. Um, what this is going to do now with speaker and attendee demographics, it'll give us kind of a nice set for thinking about event badging, Matt, looking at you. Um, and then is there anything on this list that's not, maybe that's yellow that we might want to think about for next week? Diversity documentation, I think, is really, or inclu inclusion and documentation, I think, is really important, too. Row 70. Uh, 47. Okay. Any other? I'm also still in favor of finishing row 38, the sponsorship metric. It's been that one. revised a few times. We had it during the ChaosCon event in uh, San Diego. Okay. The That's same documentation. Too. And I honestly think that, um, why did it do that, but whatever. Um, could, uh, board, I think this one would be fairly straightforward based on what we just did, the board diversity. Yeah. So maybe next week we take those on, or at least start on some of those. Sounds good. Okay. Did you finish that pull request? Yes, I already inserted the number for you. Oh, thank you. All right. I've got one quick thing about the emoji mm -hmm. scales that I found interesting. Uh -huh. I wanted to share while we're here. Um, there's this paper I found while Googling it. Um, and they have a whole page for the sentiment of the emojis and how they're generally used, which I thought was pretty interesting and relevant. What page is it? I just put that at the bottom of the chat. Okay. But it's pretty um, pretty lengthy and covers just about everything. Um, there's one question about events. Um, if we're talking about, um, uh, you know, there there being basically like like it's um, talk any talk style events. Um, there's usually diversity of um, material. Even technically, um, you know, focused talks usually have at least one or two um, non-technical or, or community-oriented, um, you know, talks or something like that. So, so maybe it's worth um, exploring where that, that would fit or if that's yeah. a focus area or something as a potentially new metric that would shed light on event diversity I, I believe so like like material wise it was yeah. the you know was the material diverse and if it was was it you know covering diversity in in the right way of, yeah. of, of, of matter or um, I think it's it's important to know that whether or not events are talking about um, these kind of issues, you know, that, that chaos itself is trying to address. So. Yep. Um, okay. I immediately thought too of when you were talking about that is diversity of languages. I know some projects spent, and I know that's not what you were talking about, Salah, yeah. but talking about diversity of languages, how some projects take time to translate their mm -hmm. documents. I actually just thought of that as well. Are there interpreters? Are there, you know, yeah. Um, um, yeah so, so no, no, definitely, it's um, it's in the right path. Like I think we're both yeah. heading in the right direction. But I think those are good ideas. Okay, I jotted them down. All right, um, I'm slowly gearing to actually be less of a mouth and more of like. <laughs> <laughs>
actor here, but yeah, so I, I do apologize for, for yeah. you know, figuring out slowly where I'm actually going to be useful. You can, see our, you can see our work is pretty slow and steady, so we just take, we take any input and we capture it, no matter how it comes. <laughs> where did you jot down those notes, Matt? Oh, I just did it right next to me right here. I'll issue a pull, re or a pull request. <laughs> I'll just put them into a, an issue. Comment. Oh, we, we can add it to the issue that I opened on metrics, right? Um, this might be more appropriate in the DNI working group. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So open up, you know, it's a similar issue there and just leave, leave notes for people to know where they go. Um, I'm, I'm not sure it's um, it's rounded enough to be an issue to be addressed immediately. That's why, right? So it's just mm -hmm. uh, a seed idea, right? Yep. And that's how we use issues, <laughs> just to keep us uh, on track. Hey, we thought about this at some point. <laughs> yeah. I just posted the repo. If you didn't, I don't know if you had it, Sala. Oh yeah, yeah. Like uh, I, I cloned it, but I was like doing geeky stuff while you guys were doing, you know, work stuff. So. So one thing I saw at GitHub Universe this week or last week was they had um, people who translated to sign language. Mm -hmm. I can't do it, but and they also had um, when the screens on the site where you could see what was said on stage. Was this just for keynotes? It was for all sessions. Really? Yes. Wow. So I don't know if they have an amazing AI that translates everything that was said to uh, text, but it was pretty good because it knew all the technical jargon. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, no, like um, it, it's a feature now on Skype, you know, um, that you could actually have it caption your call. And, and I mean, once you caption a call, you could translate a call because like Google Translate is already there and it's you know been been refined by a lot of mistakes over the years. Um, but I, I think this Skype um, the, the yeah. amount of errors captured are high. Um, you know they, anyways, yeah. yeah That's Google Hangouts has the same feature. You can turn on automatic captions in it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. everything that is set into text in real time. Yeah, Zoom, I think, gives you the option to to assign uh, typing. So, like, they have a closed caption feature, but for now, it's just, like, pick someone to type, right? <laughs> and so, so, I mean, it's, it's a little bit uh, hard to do that, I guess, right? <laughs> Oh, should I just go ahead and open the issue about that? Uh... I'm putting that one in for the day. I'm calling it the diversity and delivery of TA material. Perfect. Yeah. Diversity and delivery of TA. Okay. I also jotted down notes in our minutes. Okay. Got that. Cool. Well, thank you everyone for the good work today. Yeah, thank you. you Thanks mean. everyone. Well, next time. Until Until later. Bye. Right? Until an hour and our next meeting starts. Bye. See you later. See you. Bye.